Yeah. I've got talk, yes. So I've got 20 seconds to it's coming to you. Best of luck. Good evening and welcome to another exciting edition of The Tube. Hello all you there in the queue. Um, just before we go into this programme, uh, in answer to last week's complaints that we had about Sting using the word spunky, that with the IBA, and in fact there's nothing wrong with the word spunky at all, so spunky, spunky. Anyway, in the meantime, I... This is for everybody's queuing in. Hello everybody queuing in. Hello, Jules. And we're going to go up the hall now. And um, we're going to... Uh, chat to these people. What are you expecting to see on the tube tonight? Oh, hopefully the Go-Go's. And this man is absolutely correct. You're absolutely right, sir. You will be seeing the Go-Go's. A dream come true for him, not for others. Now, at enormous expense, brought to you the titles. Well, the Tyne Tees plastic surgeons, they've been hard at it all week to turn me uh, from Muriel Gray into me, Gary James. And uh, they've done a marvellous job, as you can all see. First tonight, our foyer concert, a great band flown in from York at great expense by Channel 4. These are Strange Days. <laughs>
and to ask the assorted members of Duran Duran what they thought of that group Strange Days. What did you think? Well, when, when I first heard the name Strange Days, I thought, oh, here we go, another Doors rip-off band. But no, they're really good. Well, well done. What a fair thing to say. We'll be seeing a lot more of Duran Duran later. And here's a lead singer from Strange Days. What do you think of Duran Duran? Yeah, they're all right. There? They're all right, yeah. They write good songs. I'll say that much. You wouldn't go any further than that, though. Oh, no, no, I quite okay, like it. Checks yeah. in the post. <laughs> Well, isn't that good? Now, now, we've seen these boys in the lobby. We're going to see them later. This is now the foyer. You've got to understand the geography, I've been told. This is the foyer. We've come out of the hallway. This is where the band played. Now, if we want to actually get into the studio, which all these people are going to be in in a minute, won't you? Yes. Uh, we have to come up here and go through the... Uh, they put their coats here. Look, there's coats being put down there. It's very dramatic, very exciting stuff. And we can either take the stairs, which are up there, or we can take the lift, which is here. Remember, this is live. Lucky there's not a fire going on. Let's hope it comes soon. I have to be able to calm it on air. Well, you can tell that this is live television because I am sitting on my foot because I wasn't allowed to go to the loo before the show started. However, there are so many girls on tonight's show that even the crew came out of the pub early and the whole place has the overpoweringly erotic smell of brute. Later tonight, we've got the all-girl American band, the Go-Go's. And to get you ready, here are lots of sequined covered wobbly bits and we see three clips of all-girl groups from the 60s. <laughs> general consensus from the drunks sitting around the bar here was that that was in fact Mark Ullman from Soft Cell in disguise. Anyway, from the Shangri-Las we go, oh, with the niff of brute rising and giving us all asthma, here's yet more 60s influenced music, this time from the West Midlands. It's the Maisonettes singing Heartache Avenue, their first single.
Well, they still won't let me in the studios, the rats, but never mind. So here I am stuck down in the reception area. But still, never mind. James has the last laugh because somewhere over here, I happen to know, we have Steve Cram, European champion and winner of everything. Hi, Steve. What are you looking forward to in the show? Um, you haven't looked, have you? I haven't looked yet. No, no. Know. I'm looking forward to it. Some intrepidish. I don't see many athletes around. No, well, I'm an athlete. You wouldn't believe it, but I am. And uh, what else was I going to say to you? Oh, yeah, what, how did you get here? Did you run here? Contrived question there. I wish I had run. I couldn't get through them, no. Well, I flew here, actually. I don't know if I make your blooming arms ache. <laughs> Please yourselves. So, as people filing past all over the place, we're going to have to fight our way through. Never mind, Steve. Paula will be having a chat with you later on in the studio. And we're going to go over and have a look at some archive film here, see if you can spot the stars. Coming up around about now, 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 now!
Yes, Alf from the zoo. And the fabulous Eric Burden, obviously. Alf will be on again later. And, uh, and me. I only practiced once as well, wasn't twice we went for it. Um, still good at it. Yeah. Uh, do you ever get tired of singing that song? Yeah, well, uh, it was a bit of a ball and chain at one time, but uh, it's a case of if you don't do it, people won't let you off the stage, so yeah. I have to do it. <laughs> do you, do you was saying earlier about the lyrics of it, how when you first did it, in fact, the lyrics were changed to be about a gambler when in fact they were about something else? Yeah, originally it was a girl song. Yeah. And uh, we took it and made it um, the male idiom. Mm. It works well, both ways, don't it? Yeah. Yes, oh yes. And, and the word we were trying to avoid using was it was in fact a song about a prostitute. That's right. <laughs> we didn't want to use that word though. Yeah. Um, now you are both blues influenced. I mean, I've read that you're, uh, you, I believe you got your job in New Zoo by being, putting an advert in saying blues thing. Is that right? Tell That's me about right. that. Yeah. What happened then? Well, I just put an advert in for a blues band because I was out on it at the moment, yeah. at the time. And uh, Vincent answered it. Yeah. So I just got together from there. But I mean, it's odd because you're both, I mean, we're all different ages, I guess. But blue seems to be a, a sort of a steady influence. I mean, is it still, still something that you're interested in? Well, to me, blues uh, will always be the mainstay, uh, one of the mainstream influences in popular music. And uh, it always has been, I think. It possibly always will be in this century. Because you know? mm. it seems like the black music on the whole is like a big influence on you. And the other thing is that blues is an influence too, but if you listen to your records, as we will do later on, uh, it doesn't sound anything like blues at all. That's because sometimes you use more than three chords. I say, yeah, clever stuff, eh? Now, you you also were both saying earlier that you were both you both got a bit tired of touring. First of all, tell me about where you were touring and how. Well, we've we're just done sort of like about three, four English dates. It's not on this tour so far, and yeah. it's really got me. <laughs> and you were saying you've been and you were saying you've been touring for twenty years. Well, yeah, I've just done three or four thousand, <laughs> yeah. years, and I'm still tired. Getting a bit tuckered out there. Uh, yeah. yeah. And what, what have you been playing in Europe? Uh, yeah, well, in the last eighteen months, I did uh, Australia. I took tours in the United States and I just finished a tour of Europe. Yeah. You haven't done any gigs in England for a while, I believe, have you? Not for ten years. Really? No, Why is uh, that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm raring to go. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to working in England. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's also, uh, there's, has just come out a film uh, that you've made, mm. which is, in fact, the reason why you're in Newcastle is because it's premiering here on Monday, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, we're having a press showing here in Newcastle. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what, um, I might want to tell us about the film, because I... Well, it's about somebody like me, and uh, it was shot. It's a West German film, English language, and uh, it's a kind of a look at the sleazy side of rock and roll. Mm. And you play the lead role of the I singer, the I believe. Yeah. lead, yeah, in a sleazy film. Well. Is it something you want to get into more films? Yeah, I think that uh, acting is, is a great medium. It, 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 it's very stressful, uh, but... Unlike the stress that we go through in, in this business, it um, has more pull in many directions mm. rather than just the pull of the audience and the band as you're performing. Yeah. As an actor, you have a pull from the director, from the script and from the, the crew and, and the audience. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, that's the thing I was going to ask. There's somebody in this studio tonight called Andy Summers, and I didn't realise this, but in fact, <laughs> this is your life, no, it, in fact, uh, you play with him. Tell us about your association with Andy Summers. Yeah, uh, Andy, <laughs> Andy and I go back uh, to, I don't know, 1978. We were around 1978 and we were together for about a couple of years touring the United States. Because he said he knew this song and he was going to come and play it, but then he sort of bottled out. Check in down, Andy. <laughs> Andy, bottle job. Um, tell us about the music in the film that you've got. Uh, I, I composed about 60% uh, of it and um, the others were blues songs that I felt that I couldn't write but that I wanted to have in the film so mm. I chose uh, one or two songs by other people such as yeah. Elmore James and Jesse Winchester and the like. Is the film on general release now? Or will it, will it go on general release after it's press time? We'll see what the critics have to say about it. Okay, then. Well, I have to wind up. We'll see you later, Alf. Yes. And we'll see you later on. Thanks a lot, Eric. Thank and you. now we're going to see a clip from that very said film, which is Come Back.
few moments of peace. Even though we're in a city of madness. City of mad people. All running around, don't know where they're going. I was successful. I've just realised I forgot. You can hear me now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should we start again? Yeah. Well, what he was saying was why he wanted to be the fastest man in Britain and, in fact, Europe. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's just because it was something I'm successful at athletics. You know, if I if I'd been a good footballer, I would want to be the best footballer. You know, it's not. Um, I don't know. It's not particularly athletics. It was just because I was good at that. And then you progress. You become the best in the area, and then maybe the best in England. Then you go for better things. When did you start running? When I was about 12 years old. It wasn't serious then. I, I used to run for the school. I took, began to take it a bit more seriously when I was 14, 15 years old. And mm. gradually, you just become more and more involved. Do you think that anyone could become a, a runner? Um, I mean, could I if I suddenly got the urge to I'm start sure you becoming could. Yes, a runner? I'm sure you could. Uh, yeah, anybody can run. It's the most natural thing for a human being to do. Well, nearly the most natural thing for a human being to do. Mm. And do you fancy moving into commercials now that you're a sort of superstar athlete? I've started drinking Horlicks, of course. Yeah, it puts you to sleep, though, doesn't it? So is the advert. Um, I don't know. I mean, if, if that sort of thing came along, yeah, I, I would doubt I would turn it down. But at the moment, I'm concentrating on being an athlete first and mm. that sort of thing. What are you going to be doing next? Well, I'm having a rest at the moment, the end of the season, and uh, I have to get back down to some sort of basic winter work, basic ground work, and then uh, to World Championships next year. Right, as I wave my microphone, here are some incredibly handsome, healthy-looking people. Healthy. healthy. I wouldn't healthy. Say healthy, no. Well, that was a good link, you see, from Steve to Duran Duran, who are sitting here. I'll just move my leg. So. I'll get off. <laughs> and now, tell me a bit about your video project I've been hearing a lot about. Oh, we don't want to talk about videos. We thought this programme was supposed to be full of trivia and trite sexual in innuendo, you know? I'm moving on to the trite sexual innuendo in a minute. That's why I move my leg. <laughs> right. Yeah, we make videos. Yeah. Mm, we we um, go all over the place to make videos. Do you think it's just an excuse for a good holiday? Partly. Mm. Yes. Um, apart from that, we, we think it's worth, worth going to nice places to get good videos. I mean, you just don't get uh, decent location shots in St John's Wood. That's true. Your tour at the moment, how's it been going? I went to a gig yesterday and they were all screaming with rigor mortis like Beatlemania. How's the rest of it been going? Ask him so you can lean in front. Right. It's been going very well, actually. Uh, we did some great shows in Glasgow. That was a good one. And uh, Manchester was good. It's just been going really well. The, somebody was telling me earlier on that you've got a film coming out next year, and you better tell me a bit about that. <laughs> well, there is a possibility. Um, we've been working a lot on video projects during this year, 
and we felt that it'd be interesting to sort of expand it and be able to do a film. So next year we're hoping if we've got the time and <laughs> we can write the songs for it, then <laughs> maybe so. Stop being trying. <laughs> I'm trying to be sad. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, um, it, it won't definitely happen. It's, it's going to be around sort of July, August if we do it. And when's the video album going to come out? We reckon that it should be finished by about February. Has it cost a fortune? Yes, absolute tons. And do you think it was worth it? Um, well, when you, you count up the amount of Aston Martins you could have with all the money that we've spent on um, videos, maybe not, but uh, it's been a lot of fun, hasn't it? And in the States, what happened while you were in the States? Because you've just got back from there. Are you not bored with touring all the time? I don't, we're not bored, we're just bloody knackered. Oops. What? Oops. Oh, you yes. promised you wouldn't! Right, where's the ruler? <laughs> no, you did. No, it's, we've been touring since uh, February, really, and it's, beginning, it's been a long year for us. And we're just about to have our first holiday for about, well, a year. Right, so now... Now we're going to see a clip from a Duran Duran film, which is an unpretentious little work where we see Simon reciting Shakespeare on the end of a pier. I know how he feels about that. Anyway, right, moving on. Uh, that's from the Duran Duran video, which will be available next year, so you can all um, rush out and buy that when it comes out. Right. Fresh, just before he zaps off to Montserrat to do the new police album, Andy Summers is with us. Hi Andy, if I could, I've taken all this PA equipment out the back of my pocket so I can sit on the comfy chairs. How are you? Not bad. Triff, right, uh, you've got a new album coming out, which, um, no, it's out already, isn't it? It is out, yeah. Yeah, with uh, Robert Fripp, and it's called... I Advance Masked. What, um, what's the... Um, the gen behind that title of the album, Does it, is it, has it got any significance or what made you decide to call it that? Well actually this title was one that we had pinned up on the wall last summer in Montserrat when we recorded amongst myriad other titles. Um, it was uh, in the front of a book by Salvador Dali but it was a phrase that I thought was particularly applicable to modern life, especially if you live in the rock world where I think you need to maybe have a persona which is a kind of mask so that you can go on and not get too screwed up by the machinations of uh, the rock industry. And it's, the album's got a great cover, actually, which um, we can get a look at if we uh, oh, I stretch over here. Um, tell me, that's a great cover, an album cover. Can we see it there if I hold it still somewhat? Would you like to tell us a bit about that, the artwork, because it's fab? There's a lot of effort in it. Yeah, this cover was done by a New York artist called Jimmy Rizzi who's um, previously did a, an album sleeve for uh, the Tom Tom Club. He's actually a mate of mine, and uh, he did me a police album about four years ago, which we haven't used as yet. But it's, this is a piece of artwork that I have at home, so I was really uh, happy. Yeah, it's a terrific colour. Um, what about the actual combination of Robert Fripp and Andy Summers? Because to me, um, uh, it, would, it immediately appeared to me to be a rather strange combination for me, knowing you with your police work with the police. How did that come about? How did you get to meet Robert? Um, it may seem strange in the fact that we were really on two different ends of the rock spectrum, I suppose. But I think really that's what makes it work. It's uh, We're so unlike, maybe, as personalities and even guitar players. We you know very different ways of playing and approaching playing the guitar which I think manages uh, to make it work because there's a kind of tension there of trying to come together to, to make your music work and I think that really is true of any good group uh, music experience. It's when people are really different that the effort to come together to make the music is what... And do you think that this will affect your future solo musical outlook on things, you know, if you go on to do uh, other solo work or... What, as opposed to the work you do with the police, how do you think that uh, this album will...? Well, it's difficult to say specifically what's going to happen, but I think all these experiences colour you along the way. Well, we've got uh, a bit of the video which you made to go with it uh, coming up shortly, but uh, also I, I was having a quick look at it earlier on and there's kind of exotic dancers or what have you. Did you have anything to do with the, the uh, background to that as well? During the day we did, yes. I'm not talking about what you did with the dancers. I mean, what? Uh, how about... did you, I mean? Say, shut up, you lot, I'm doing this. Uh, no, I mean, they're kind of dancing around doing exotic things. But was that, is that to do with the music, or is it totally, you know, sort of just to make it? Well, I think it's in the uh, eye of the beholder. I mean, originally those girls were going to be musicians, but um, 
we pre preferred to have them dancing around with almost nothing on in the end. It was more exciting for Robert and I. Disgusting it is. Well, um, and uh, what about the future police work that's, co that's coming up? What about the new album in Monster? Yeah, well, we're counting down now. The days are finally going away until we go off to Monster. We're leaving on November the 30th and we have six weeks there and then we go from that tropical climate up to Montreal in the depth of winter to uh, finish it off. I say, well, with Duran Duran out east and you going out to Montserrat and whatever, I have to make do with Hastings in October, but maybe things will change in the future. I'm going to get... Not for you. Not for you. Well, I'm going to go... Oh, thank you very much. I'm going to go over in a minute... To, shut up, you lot. Uh, I'm going to go over in a minute and put on a cassette, because you have to do everything for yourself, Randy, as you might have noticed. Demarcation, but uh, never mind. And uh, we'll see a bit of your video, so... Up we go. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Right, I slam it in. Thanks very much, Andy, by the way. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Shove it in. Push, push the button. And with a bit of luck, coming up, in about three seconds should be Andy Summers and Robert Fripp. <laughs> That's a very zappy little piece of film, wasn't it? How about a piece of uh, a piece of applause for that film? Mm. Rating highly on the clapometer. Now you'll have noticed that lots of things can go and have gone wrong on the live show. For instance, Paula has decided never to speak again. I said, don't worry about it. Just because 15 million people have seen you made a complete fool of yourself, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, also, it's only a TV show. That's right. Also, earlier on, I was I had a bit of Spanish tummy. It wasn't nerves, Spanish tummy, and uh, on Duran, so Duran. maybe we could have another television first and spew up again. Um, also, I've got this. This is uh, called Happy Cheese Magazine. It was sent in. Now, if you've got anything that you want to send in to us to advertise, um, then do it. In a minute, this is a film from Venice Beach in America now that we're going to have. For, and we're going to have a weekly section of us in America. And this is us going to the beach. And uh, who can you see in it? Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, who can we see? And we can see the bangs, who are now called the bangles for legal reasons. Lots of peculiar Americans. And please note, the bangles are an American new wave group, so they're wearing two pairs of tights each. Uh, also, the cars are Hudson Horny.
I've played many nights at the Whiskey Club. Oh, times I've played there. I've played there more times than you've had often the stuff in your face. No, you haven't. Stuff in your face. How many often have you had it? Just stuff in your face. The Roxy. Played there too. They're all flea pits though, actually, I reckon. Well, the Roxy at one point had the Rocky Horror Show on it. it yeah. People used to go every single night for the whole run. They'd go for six weeks every night to see it. Dress up in the same clothes as the people on stage. Sing all the songs along to it. Because that would only happen in America. It became like total prawns the whole time. City at night. Sunny for you, is it? Yeah, the heat's oh, getting to me. Oh, hello, into the back of the car. Oh, hey, Jamari. Through the windscreen. Of course, I don't have safety belts in these. See, this is what you call a proper dashboard. None of this plastic nonsense, and I mean, that's a real motor. None of this soppy safety nonsense. This isn't a ruddy Volvo. It's a real man's car. Motor. If you smash your head in that and it goes into a wall, they just hose it down and sell it to the next man. What a proper car. Well, I don't know what this beach is going to be like. I hope it's not going to be loads of he men prancing yeah. about with poxy muscles. Or it will. Shop. It'll be all these bronze gods walking around in satin shorts. Kicking sand in my face. Yeah. And the rest of them are all wearing their tra tracksuits with their satin shorts over their tracksuit bottoms in case there's an emergency. Well, I'll say now, I'm not going to take any, uh, any dung from any truculent he men because they're going to get slappies. Slappies? You're going to be firm? No, there'll, there'll be, be millions of girls with 43-inch chests on roller skates, so you'll be all right. Surfers with long, hairy legs. Yeah. And men. And zinc on their nose. Mm. Roller skaters. I knew it. God, look at him. What a crawl. Oh, we can rent some skates. Are you good? Rent some... Oh, you must do that. First person I see that's browner than me, I'm leaving. Yeah. Woo, woo. Woo, woo. Oh, the subtle. <laughs> the enormous voice. intelligence taken <laughs> yes. from that one. <laughs> woo, woo. Incredible vocabulary there. College education, that is. <laughs> it's all people with no clothes on. It's I not. It is a bit like Tor Bay because we've got all the palm trees, people going naked and that. Mums and dads. Oh goodness me! Look at that boy over there. Well, they're a nice trim around the car park. Hey, get down! I've picked up the lingo now.
like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. I'm Matt Samples. I'm the brother to Joe Samples, the Jazz Crusaders. He's the press. He's you know the work. Jazz Crusaders. Oh, yeah, He's the press. He's the press and out of work. He's the press and out of work. Get out of the way. I'm his brother. He's the press and out of work and Take drinking. RGD, go <laughs> back to work. Dude, it's crazy, man. Remember me. I'm going to be a star. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> so many drunks. This I never saw in my life. Unbelievable. The front stoop, hanging out the window, watching all the cars go by, roaring as the breeze blow. A crazy lady living in a bag, eating out of garbage pails. Used to be a fag hag, such a dance to tango. Skip the life and dango. A silk on print to see the... Miles. Oh, hey. Gonna... How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm going to ask you a few questions. OK. Now, tell me, the first thing that I think everyone wants to know is why are you uh, doing this? Oh, well, I'm a bodybuilder, and I'm trying to keep my body in shape, you know. And how big were you when you started? Oh, I was weighing about 99 pounds. That's about my weight. Yeah. I started oh. from <laughs> a little guy, you know, and I worked my way You're up. You're a small boy. Yeah. And you got, yeah. you got those. God. Yeah. Wow. And how much do you train every day? I train for about two hours a day. Every single day. Six days a week. Yeah. So you're very dedicated, are you? Yeah. And what do you plan to? Do you think it's very useful to you being so fit? Yeah, it helps me out as far as uh, life goes. It keeps me out of trouble. I don't run into many bullies, and uh, I usually get jobs being bodyguards and you know competition, mm. weightlifting. And what happens when you meet girls? Do you think that they all want to sort of go? <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, they like that. Do they? Yeah. They're all mad for you, are they? Yeah, most of the girls like that. Don't you ever worry that they might be just after you for your body? They might just like me for my body. Yeah. I mean, you no, might well, I, w I was meeting quite a few girls before I even had a, a nice body like this. <laughs> um, now, what would somebody do with one of these? That's a small okay, weight of 40 pounds. Like this, put the back arms like that. And what, what's that building up? It builds up all back here, the biceps. And which is your favorite bit? My favorite? Yeah. The back arms, like that. Back like that. Do you know them for because in America, there's a lot of big competitions for uh, bodybuilders. Yeah, I go into it. So you must have a, a pose that you do at the end, because they have a pose yeah. off, don't they, where you all do your, yeah. your bits and pieces. Yeah. So can you give us a quick, quick flash? Quick pose. Yeah, so here he is, with his pose off. Well, show us a few. Susanna, rhythm, guitar, and vocals. Debbie, drums and vocals. Annette, bass, guitar. Vicky, lead guitar. So and tell me. Vocals. And vocals, oh, I see, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who, how did you start? How did it all start? Where did it all begin? The beginning was we met in a garage. What, and... what? When I sell petrol? <laughs> it's true. No, no, no. In, a, in her house. We met through a newspaper ad, uh -huh. officially. What, secret meeting at garage. Yeah. All the turn up can start. I'll, the band. I'll attend. <laughs> Open call. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, how did you then make the transition into a record label then? Well, it was a very small deal. It was just something that we wanted to put out a record, and uh, that was the way you did it. How did the record do then? <laughs> it got played on the radio right, a lot. Right. A lot of people buy it after they heard it being played on the radio. Yeah, yeah, it got on the charts in LA, local charts. Do you think you have a good chance of getting chart success, or do you think it's hard? We're hoping so. Oh, well, we're oh, hoping. We're oh, hoping. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yeah. definitely. This last spring, a bunch of like three or four really good bands started hitting the clubs, and it was really a hip thing going on. Are there any other girl bands? Um, actually, there are. There yes, are. Sure. They're really coming out of the woodwork now. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I just think it's time. You know, 
uh, it's just time for girls to start playing. It's, it's um, something that should be happening. And uh, the more the better, as far as I'm concerned. Do yeah. you think, if I, said, if I said to you, I think that you're, you're charmingly 60s, would you take that as an insult or as a compliment? Well, I'm charming, sure. you can keep that in. Yeah. yeah. 60s, throw that out. No, well, not necessarily. We were influenced by the 60s, but uh, you know we don't consider ourselves a revival band. Yeah. So, no. well, do you all live in Los Angeles? Yes. Mm -hmm. And have you all always lived in Los Angeles? California yes. girls. Born you here. like it? Valley Born girls. Girl. Has to be. Would you rather be here than in New York? Yes. yes. Right now? Rather right be... now, yeah. Do you ever, do you ever feel, feel uh, threatened in Los Angeles, wandering about? Not when we're all together. We all protect each other. Yeah. Constantly. <laughs> How about if you're on your own? Whips and chains. Would you walk around? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she lives, yeah. Where yeah. yeah, well, she lives. <laughs> Have you played in clubs in Los Angeles? Like we looked at clubs like the Whiskey and uh, the. Yeah. Um, we played the stuff. whole Hollywood circuit. The Whiskey a Go Go everywhere. Do you think it's hard? Like, it's fun. Being, being all girls. Not really. That's no really difference. Hard. No, it really hasn't. It's natural for us. on the tube, it's Yazoo! Woo!
stand alone and watch the clock I only wait for it to stop Hands in the room, locked up inside me Cut out magazines, remind me I sit and wait alone In my room against the wall There's a picture very small A photograph I took some years ago Shows a picture of the room I know I sit and wait too long
just to get my sideboards to look the same, but now I'm ready to play the game. Clean pants, clean teeth, clean shave. I'm under starter's orders, I'm raring to go. It's the sport for all and I'm going for goal. I'm going to play the rigmarole. I trot off to the local night spot where the doorman with the dicky bowl gives me the dead eye before nodding approval. And it's two get quid to get in. Struth, at least I'm in. Spoke too soon. Can't take your coat and leave it in the cloakroom. Another ten pence. More expense. Well, that's the obstacle course complete. Right, let's have a look at this place then. Hey, it's not bad. Posers galore. Stone cold faces. Split level parquet dance floor. Ornate pillars. Laser lights. No doubt later on a few fights. Added bonus. There's some talent in tonight. And naturally, there's a gibbering DJ who plays a special request for for Mandy's 17th birthday. Especially for you, Mandy Poo, but we want to see everyone groove. And as always, the herd instinct ensues, and me, I'm included, I'm starting to move. I dance myself dizzy, bop till I drop, crawl to the bar, and the bar's chock-a-block, and I've had enough, really, and it's only 12 o'clock, and the game's in progress. So I guess I'll ride the wave, spin the wheel, throw the dice, and have a few more pints. Christ, look at prices, chuffy neck. Battle lager, please, look. Will you take a check? And I'm scanning the dance floor, and the crowd shifts, it seems, as one jerking bodies heads bobbing along in the semi-darkness, a rhythmic sea that turns and twists, and I'm swaying too. Not to the music, I'm just pissed. I might even go an orange after this. And I spot me mates leaping around like men on fire in the middle of the floor, so I join the furore. Now one of them, he's already into this girl who keeps asking for coke and he keeps getting a Bacardi as well, saying get it down, they lass it, we ain't choked, they don't remarry, what the hell. The rest of us, we're dancing and slipping and standing and staring and smoking and sipping and dancing and slipping and standing and staring and smoking and sipping, and then, I see her. Next to that pillar, there's two of them and the smaller one's looking straight back at me. So I dance and slip and stand and stare and smoke and sip and plan my strategy. To the bog for a burst first. Get a better look as I pass. She stays glassier cool when I brush her with my arm. Our gazes collide and she stays real calm. A classy little lass. I'm standing in the toilet feeling a bit sick. I'll have to switch to Britvik. I'm trying to conjure up some original opening line to hit her with, but my head starts to spin. I'm waiting for a brainwave, honey, and the tide's gone in, so I aim for a fag end. Psh! Which shoots off when I hit it and I giggle and oh shit, I piddle down my leg and splash me moccasins. So while I wait for them to dry, I perfect me parting in the mirror and I notice my eyes are the proverbial pee-pee holes in the snow. Okay, you're in, stop play, now I'm ready to resume, continue. Ah, the rigmarole, yeah, back to the modern crowd. She's still there and she doesn't flinch an inch when I single her out with a spotlight stare. On the contrary, she replies with stroboscopic like flickering eyes. So with an ultra bright smile and a casual stroll, I leave the safety of the fold and approach the goal. Hi, what's your name? Do you want to dance? Do you want to drink? Yes, Janet Perno. So we jive and rap and all that crap. What music do you like? Where do you live? What do you do? Reggae, Gateshead, on the dole. I'm in command now, got the upper hand now, in control of the rigmarole. Closer we dance and closer still, which is a mite alarming, because I've got these tight trousers on and she'll find out about her skill in the art of snake charming, so I tactfully retreat. And I glance at me watch and it's turned one o'clock. Enough of this rambling, the preamble must stop. So we go to a chair for an oral exchange. A tongue-in-cheek conversation at point-blank range. And when we come up for air, <laughs> the small talk's gone. No longer there. Instead, an awkward silence. Which gets broken when a scuffle on the dance floor prompts a brief discussion on senseless violence. I know, it's disgusting. Shall we go somewhere else? But it's obvious that neither of us are into this polite chat. So once more, we interlock. <laughs> And we stay like that till her ugly friend comes along. And they disappear to the loo, leaving me vexed, perplexed, and wondering why they're always going twos. Some logical reason I expect, and at that moment I am feeling decidedly wrecked. Then La Femme reappears and seems even nicer. Auburn air, slim, lovely eyes, and I'm sure I've backed a winner well. All those suggestive pouting looks she's been throwing my way. Then she bends down and whispers sensually in my burning ear. I'm going now, OK. Oh, wait, no, she says she's leaving. Her friend's leaving. She always leaves with a friend. Great, I don't believe it. Yeah, sure, see you again. I watch her go, then sitting alone. I know for a fact that I won't remember what she looked like exactly because the great god paralytica attacks me. Feeling thoroughly cheesed off, I have another drink and rejoin the ever-decreasing masses. Three people dancing and 30 collecting glasses. And the smooth old DJ is still there playing one less smoochie burger for all the kiddie buns in love. Well, that does it. Fumbling for me cloakroom tag, I stumble to the door and head for home. In true Shakespearean tragedy fashion, I exit. A poor loser in the rigmarole. Outside, my ears buzz with the sudden quiet and the night air acts as a coolant on my sweat-sodden brow. There are two vehicles parked on the curb. Panda car, taxi, 
I opt for the latter and mumble incoherent directions several times before he understands me. It's just your uncle you can't visit your uncle. I try to focus on his meter, but the bumpy ride home provokes a sudden inner turbulence. And feeling really sickly, I pay him quickly and rush upstairs to greet the toilet on my knees, eyes watering, thanking God in between spasms that I didn't have a Chinese, excuse me. <laughs> I fall into bed half dressed and the Sandman doesn't get a look in as sleep is instantaneous and I wake up in the morning with a regular temple throbber boom, 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 boom and bits all over me socks and I look in the mirror and let out a prolonged sour groan <laughs> Never ever again Well, I'll be off tonight to play the game, to go for gold to try me luck on the rigmarole. Well, welcome back to the Tube. And next on the menu is a live set from one of the most exciting bands to come out of the USA for ages and ages and ages. They are the Go-Go's. And their first album shot straight into the US charts at number one. And success seems to be their destiny. So if you want to uh, check up on groups like the Go-Go's, you could do a lot worse than check them out in this book, which is the Rock Year book 1983. Looking over the top. It's absolutely Steve crammed full of everything you want to find out about. Yes, I know. But uh, full of everything you want to know about pop. And uh, he's got some real gem quotes as he's looking at the back of his book. I weigh seven stone, says Claire Grogan of Altered Images, and six stone, and that is me bum. But uh, enough of that, because here, live now on the tube, are the Go Go's! <laughs>
Have a good rest. And this next song is off of my first album, BB and the Beat.
Right. 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 Good night from good me. Night, good night, good, good night, good night. I'd like to say that they've been great big answers to the Go-Go's. been good all round. I'm now going to go and pebble dash the British Rail seats. Meanwhile, on with the fantastic Go-Go's. <laughs> <laughs>